If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. Comments and views expressed on The More Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the views of Kevin Moore, The More Show, or this radio station and its affiliates or sponsors. Hello and welcome to another edition of The More Show, which is sponsored by the MyScape magazine. On today's show, I'm about to be joined by my guest, Ray Jordan. Now, Ray is a UK paranormal investigator and to date has investigated over 50 locations and is also a leading member of the International Paranormal. Ray has appeared on many UK and international radio shows and has hosted his own paranormal radio show called Haunted 911. Ray is also one of the regular contributors for one of the UK's number one magazines for all things paranormal and unknown called Haunted. With his own feature called Ghostly Whispers Ray Jordan Interviews, Ray gets to meet a lot of the UK celebrities and ask them their own opinion on the paranormal. Well, without further ado, Ray Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now Ray, um, you're an uh, international paranormal investigator. Now, h How did you get into that? How did I get into the whole ghostly thing? Well, I my journey actually began uh, about five years old. Um, we used to play in my grandfather's cellar, and uh, we used to go looking for ghosts and sort of cowboys and Indians, you know, that kind of thing when, when you're a kid. Um, and I think it's just grown from there, really. I used to read books about the supernatural, about the paranormal, um, any folklore, anything I could find. I, I was thirsty for that kind of knowledge. Um, and then I had uh, an experience where I was out in the garden, looked to the kitchen window, and I saw my grandmother. Um, even though I knew she'd passed away about six, seven months before, I knew she was gone, but I couldn't really understand why she was looking at me. Um, looking at me as if, you know, there was a, a living person looking down at me in the kitchen. Um, and, and it's just grown from there, really. I used to read books in secret, go to the library, um, and then, unfortunately, two of my friends passed away three months apart, and that put me on a new journey to find out, once we're dead, are we dead? You know, do we just cease to exist? Because I can't believe that we, we just stop. I think we go somewhere, or our soul, our essence goes somewhere, um, and that's brought me to here. Okay, so you mentioned uh, a couple of things there, and um, so it, it was the, the passing of, of your close friend or friends um, that that caused you to go on this journey. So, do, I mean, would you say then, if that event had never happened, you you never would have got into your your paranormal investigations and 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 you know become a, a TV presenter and a radio presenter? Then is that what you're saying? Well, I, I because I had the the interest when I was very very young. I still think I would have had that journey. Um, I still think I would have been investigating, but maybe. I think maybe not as a bigger impact than, than do you know what I mean? I, I think it, it would have been a slower kind of rise to, to the interest. I think losing my two friends has almost catapulted me, not to desperately find answers, but I'm keen to, to find the answers, you know, uh, um, about life after death, supernatural, paranormal, hauntings, you know, everything. So I think it's catapulted me a bit quicker than maybe I would have done had they not passed away. Okay. So um, you also write for a UK na national magazine as well, Haunted, I believe. Yes, that's correct. Yes, uh, I've just joined Haunted. Um, I had two years at Ghost Voices magazine writing their um, interviews. I used to interview people 
who are well known, who are not known, um, famous mediums, or everyone across the board to get personal um, interviews with them, trying to get their fans or followers to see them in a different light that they might not normally know about them. Okay. But um, I've just joined Haunted, and my column's going to be called Jordan Laid Bear, and um, it's a fun magazine, very stylish, very sassy, very sexy, but it, it, it's given me a free reign of... of what I want to do as as a columnist. I'm going to be continuing doing my um, interviews, but I've really stepped the mark up by doing a lot of, trying to do a lot of high-profile celebrity names to, to get the interview. Let's look at some of your um, investigations that you've done. Um, now, you've, you've done a couple of books, and the first one that we're going to refer to is uh, Paranormality. Yeah. And there's a couple of stories in there that that I'd like to, to sort of speak about as well. Sure. Investigation reports. Um, yeah. Tell us the story then of your housemate from the past. God, I'm trying to wrap my brain now. I'm absolutely trying to wrap my brain because I've had so many experiences. Housemate from the past was when I lived in London. Um, I lived in West Drayton. And um, we used to live in this massive house. It was uh, a house that used to be rented out to cabin crew. And we used to um, have, you know, parties there and what have you. And I remember one day that we could hear bizarre things going on in in the living room because my bedroom was the same length as the living room and it was quite a large room. And it was almost if there were... <clears throat> Almost if there were people downstairs, but when you opened your bedroom door to almost have a listen, it would stop. Um, and we found out that the house used to be an old shop. Um, the kitchen still had the, the shelving where they used to you know, put the tins of food. It was a fascinating place to be, fascinating. Yeah. What, what other sort of stories you know, come out to you to say, look, you know, this, this is a really good investigation that you've done and that's, that's been proof to you that there is more than just this existence? I mean, I've, I've literally done hundreds of investigations. I mean, one of them that stands out for me, it wasn't even in this country. It was in Mexico. Um, we did uh, an investigation. I hooked up with a, a Mexican paranormal investigation team called Contacto Mystico. And uh, he took me to uh, Javier, who's the, the, the director of the, the team, uh, took me to a, many locations across Mexico. And there was one where we were looking for the ghost of Nina. Um, and he took me to this massive, massive cemetery um, in Mexico. And um, we were outside her crypt. I mean, Mexicans have a different point of view to what I think we do. I mean, I normally wouldn't go around a graveyard, um, you know, looking for some some ghost. I think possibly that could be a bit disrespectful, but Mexicans see it differently, and I've got no problem with that. Um, and um, we had this device with us called the Frank's Box. Now, it, it, it's a bit of equipment where it continually scans radio waves, uh, not stopping on any particular station. Um, and it's believed that the, the, the spirit voice will manipulate itself to come through this radio. Um, and Javier turned this box on, and there was just nothing, complete silence, absolutely complete silence. And I thought, oh, you know, here we go, what a crock. This isn't going to work. And no kidding, Kevin, all of a sudden, this girl's Mexican girl's voice came out of nowhere, coming through this radio. And my jaw dropped because, you know, I'm quite a logical person. And luckily we had a, a translator with us and this girl's voice was saying, hello, what are you doing here? Who are you looking for? And after sitting there half an hour with nothing and then this voice came out, it just absolutely stunned me. I mean, was there any logical, you know, uh, sense behind it? I mean... Do you know what? There was no signals on uh, the, the the other radios that we had there. There was no signal from any mobile or cell phones, you know, because I checked all of that. So it must have been in a very dark sort of signal area. I, I don't know. I'm very open-minded about that experience because I can't say it was paranormal and I can't say it wasn't. But I, I, it's one of those question marks that 
in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, wow, this this, this could have been a, a spirit voice. You know, this could have been that girl. Yeah. But then logic kicks in again and says, no, Ray, it's not. But I just, I just don't know. But I, I, at the time, I was completely stunned. Do you think a lot of your investigations that you've done, um, has it slowly sort of made you think that maybe there is more than this and you know, maybe consciousness continues? I, I would like to think um, consciousness continues. I mean, I'm still, I'm still looking to, to find that shred of evidence. I think we all are, um, all of us investigators, whether it's in the UK or around the world. I mean, I've, I've, I've investigated so much that I can honestly tell you that my point of view has changed. Um, I used to believe everything was paranormal, every noise, every creak. But then as I've grown and as I've developed, I can now honestly hold my hands up and say, um, I need the harder proof now. I, I need that harder proof to, for me to believe that that is paranormal. But there have been some cases where I can't explain it. And, and I am swayed towards the fact that, yes, maybe this we have experienced something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's one chapter in the book called, you know, the face, a face in the wall. Oh, goodness me, that used to frighten me so much as a child. Absolutely frighten me. And even to this day, I can't explain it. I've never, I've, I've never been back, put it that way. Never been back. T- tell even us about it's it. It's opposite my parents' house. I've never, ever looked over. Never been back. Well, no. t- tell us about the experience, Ray. Well, it might seem really bizarre to, to many people, but when I was younger, um, I used to obviously play in the house, and we used to have one room, which was my um, the front room, which was my parents' room at the time, or it could have been my sister's room, because they swapped rooms for a while. Um, and I used to look out the window, and there's a, a three-story house, a, a row of three-story houses opposite my parents, and by the front door, um, there was a porch, and to the side... I used to see what I believed was a face in the wall, a face looking at me. Um, and I could see it clear as day. I mean, in the daylight, I could, I could look over to that particular area and there was nothing what I would call untowards, nothing that might represent a face. You know, like it could have been moss on the wall, in the pattern of sure. the wall. But nothing I could, I could really see that would, you know, make a face. And if I'd walked down the street going home to my parents' house, I used to look across and I used to see this face following me. The eyes were following me. It it was just the most bizarre thing. And I swear that the mouth would move sometimes. Could it have been a trick of light? Maybe. But this was every day. Do you think it's because you've been looking for uh, um, answers that you're more susceptible to sort of events taking place around you or you're more, uh, you, you, you know, th- these are going to occur more often in a sense? I don't know, because at that particular time, I was quite young. I'm 40 now, and this happened quite quite a long time when I was a lot younger. So I don't think at that time I was really searching for anything. I was reading material, and whether that influenced my thought pattern, I don't know. It could have done. Mm, mm. Um, it, it, you know, I hold my hands up. It could have done. But... I really don't know. Again, it's one of those situations where I question it. I question it. I don't know. What's a typical sign from the other side, would you say? Well, sometimes it's, it's not um, It's not actually at the actual event. It could be afterwards. I mean, we, we carry recording devices, dictaphones. Um, it could be an EVP, electronic voice phenomena, that you might be able to capture. And that when you're going through all the material... You know, you put it through the um, sound mixer, filter out any background noises or what have you, and then trying to clear it up. And then you might get one out of hours and hours, one shred of possible or plausible, you know, ghostly voice. Yeah. Um, other evidence, you know, can be knocks and bangs. But then again, you have to be very careful with them, as you're probably aware of, because it could be... It could be, you know, if it's late at night, it could be the buildings closing down, you know, calming down after a, an active day of all the lights and doors going. And if it's wood, it will creak. You know, uh, that, ab- that Absolutely. Kind of I mean, what, what do you think of these investigators which, you know, um, swear blind that they can just switch a, you know, an electronic recorder on 
uh, speak out loud and, um, you know, they'll be able to, uh, you know, pick up a, a voice on that. No, no, I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't believe it happens that quickly. You know, I've sat for hours and hours and hours in places and we haven't got one, one shred of evidence yet. You know, you'll, you'll, I try not to read reports of other people who might have possibly been to the same location, <clears throat> excuse me, as, as myself, because I don't want that to influence anything that I'm going to think about or my thought train. Sure. Um, so I read it afterwards. And, you know, you, you get teams who might have gone to that location, been in there, what, half an hour, and it's all kicked off. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, did we go on the wrong night? Did we choose the wrong time? You know, and that makes me question everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, uh, to me, you seem someone that's, uh, you know, you're more scientific based with uh, with the approach that your ghost hunting teams uh, uh, take on or approach the situation. I mean, w what is a basic guide then to sort of, you know, setting up a ghost hunting investigation? Well, I, I think what you need to do, you need to first thing you need to do is really, really do as much research as possible on your chosen location. I think that is paramount. I think, you know, you need to try and <clears throat> get in that building. You need to try and be part of that building through the research. Um, go and visit the building. You know, go a couple of times before the actual investigation takes place so you get to know the layout, you get to know the fabric of the building. Talk to the people inside as well, the people who, who have experienced these things. You know, we have certain forms that we, we questionnaires that, that we like to fill in. Um, and it gives us a really good heads up of, of what has gone on, different points of view. Um, and then we try and marry them all up and collate the evidence and then we've got all the research on hand with us so we can fall back to that if we need to during okay. the investigation. Okay. Um, because you did some TV work as well, didn't you, with um, Paranormal 5 on, um, was it I ITV? ITV West, yeah. ITV it, West, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, what was the experience like, you know, having to do it for television? Did you, were you able to, you know, absolutely capture some, some sort of unknown events? Well, the good thing about what we did with the Paranormal Five, we actually investigated in the daytime as opposed to nighttime, because that 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 was something we were really keen to do. And and we sat down before, you know, we actually filmed the TV series with the director and producer, and thought, you know, this will be really different. And they were up for the idea, we were up for the idea because it was different, and we don't believe it had been done before. You know, a complete series of daytime investigations because. You know, if spirit are supposed to be around us all the time, then why don't why don't we investigate somewhere in the daytime? Well, well, that's that's right. Why would does, why would spirit only come out at night time? Yeah, exactly. Um, and we we try to investigate at the time or near to the time of these daytime experiences happening. Um, so that that was quite interesting, and and we did travel all over the west we did we filmed 16 locations eight were shown on tv um and we caught some evp voices we had uh coins that were moved um locked off cameras that were turned off and moved you know so there were tiny bits of evidence i mean one episode there was nothing happened at all absolutely categorically nothing happened and we still showed it because that's what happens yeah yeah, absolutely, and um, yeah, I suppose that's, that's what give, gives uh, you know some sort of um, um, uh, genuineness to to the show as well. I, I think it does, but funny enough, that episode was the only episode that didn't rate very well because nothing happened. And I'm proud that we showed that episode because it shows people that nothing does happen sometimes. You know, you can sit for seven, eight hours, or, or what have you, in a building, and nothing will happen. And I'm pleased we did that. But some of the locations that you've investigated, or you've you know you've, you've filed reports for, um, they've been pretty sort of extreme locations, haven't they? And, and one of them was the uh, London Dungeons. Oh, that 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 was interesting because that that was a real challenge, because obviously London Dungeons, how you see London Dungeons today is inside is all kind of exhibition stands and um, you know dummies. That's not how it was originally. Um, and it was interesting. I mean, we took a, a group of celebrities with us because it was a charity event for Great Ormond Street. We took some Big Brother celebrities and some other names, and, and we had, you know, it was interesting, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, a history in a place like that, surely, you, you know, you'll be prone to pick something up. 
yeah, I mean, I mean, we had a couple of really good mediums with us as well from Psychic TV, um, and there were, you know, bits and pieces happening. Um, you know, it, it, I can't say if it was definitely paranormal, but there were definitely things happening, freaking people out. Now, whether that was them freaking themselves out because obviously we were in pitch black dark, I don't know, possibly. But there were definitely certain things happening, yeah. Uh, and also, I mean, you, there's so many locations that you've investigated, and we're, we've only got time to just touch a few of them, sure. or to go over a couple of them. Um, what, what about the Weymouth Arms? The Weymouth Arms? Oh, that's in uh, Warminster, um, which is where I live. Um, that was that was a great location, very, very old um building never had been investigated before so we were quite chuffed that we got the chance to do that um you know we, we caught some some of some of the the things we caught on camera like the orb phenomena now moving on a couple of years to where i am now from from that investigation i have revisited some of those photos and some of the photos i believe are dust particles not actually spirit orbs i'm not I, I, I question all phenomena now. It's one of those areas, isn't it, that's um, not really been investigated scientifically enough, yet there seems to be something there, doesn't there? In oh, a sense. absolutely, absolutely. I think there is something there. It's, it's a really, really touchy subject for so many people. I mean, you get the believers who believe that it's the first manifestation of a ghost. You get the more scientific people who say it's just dust particles, you know airborne particles, whatever. So so it's quite of a clash of the titans, really, I think. And uh, has there ever been a location which you've investigated, which you really, you know, it, you've just wanted to get out of there? It's felt so wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, in my book, um, it, it's a personal story called uh, A Residential Haunting, um, where we were called in to do a private investigation in the book, all the names have been changed. Um, obviously to protect the real names of the people. Um, they were very happy with us, pub, you know, me publishing the, the report um, on the website at the time. Um, but it, it was, we, we got called in because um, a family, there was this husband and wife and a child and uh, two children were having really bizarre things happening um, in the house. Um, so we got called in. Um, it was almost as if the, fa the house felt crowded. Um, the, the daughter would wake up screaming, um, bed shaking, scratches, almost like things being thrown in her eyes, but there was nothing in her face, like grit. Um, her dad, uh, yeah, it, actually, there we go, that's something which is interesting. His personality changed. He really wanted to throttle his child. It, it was quite one of the most personal things I think I've experienced. Um, it was just horrible, horrible, and I couldn't wait to leave. Yeah, I mean, that just uh, sort of, you know, sends shivers down my spine. Well, if I'm that. honest with you, he actually wanted to kill his daughter. That's how he felt. He wouldn't, and I know he wouldn't, but that's how he actually felt. It was such a negative entity or whatever was in the house. It was affecting him, but it was being directed at the children. Wow. And uh, uh, what was the outcome of that uh, of that story? It was someone connected to the house. Um, the house used to belong to a hospital, so it was someone connected from the hospital who, who lived in the house and also connected to the family themselves. Um but, right. but what we did with this investigation, we actually spent probably about nine, ten hours with, in this place. We, we dined with the, you know, we had dinner with the, the family. We sat down, we got to know them, you know, so everything was comfortable. And, and we, we've never done that before, you know, really spent that amount of time with a family who, who needed help. No, no. And I suppose sometimes it's just part of the job, isn't it? Yeah, I, I quite like investigating the personal, you know, cases as well as the, the, the you know, the well-known cases. I, th I think the personal cases, you do get very close to, to the people that you investigate with or for or trying to help. Now, now when you go on a, a, a location like that, Ray, um, are you taking a, a medium or a psychic with you? On this particular occasion, we did because we felt that maybe 
we we needed a, a spiritual hand, you know, a help um, that there might have been something there from what we were being told and from what we were talking about. Th- there was something negative there. Yeah. And obviously the four, the four of us, the investigators, so there was Wayne and Sam and Andy and myself, we, we wouldn't have been able to get rid of anything that was there. You know, we're not psychic. We're not um, uh, mediums. Um, and uh, we brought the, the residential medium who we used at the time, Paul, along um, and he, you know, he, he was very good. And what's interesting is you, you walked into that house and it felt like you were walking into a bubble, a negative bubble, and you could feel it. I know this might stay, sound strange to people who are listening, but it, it was a, almost like, a, you know, like one of those zorbing bubbles that you can go in and you roll down the hill in. Yeah. It was almost as if you were going into something like that, but full of negative energy. Mm. and right at the end of the night Paul did a house clearing and it almost felt lifted completely completely lifted Um, and we did some return visits to the family you know we have an aftercare service as well we just don't leave that family and go on to the next case we go back and we make sure they're all right we we talk to them we sit down with them you know make sure their thoughts and feelings are okay how are you feeling you know have you experienced anything else and you know touch wood they haven't and um, you know, talking about the psychic mediums, uh, what, what's your stance on that? Because obviously you ha- you've um, you know you use them in your in your sort of uh, haunting uh, investigations, um, uh, but has your views changed on them over the years? Yes, totally. I mean, I've worked with some mediums who claim to have an ability to um, talk to the dead, uh, to to provide information, and Clearly they don't. Uh, but I have worked with people who, you know, are mediums and have told me bits of information, either at a location, either, you know, to do with myself or a family member or even any one of the, the team that nobody could possibly have known. And it blows me away again. I mean, I, you think to myself, how would they know that? Just how, how would you know that? But there's only about three mediums at the moment who have ever done that. Yeah, I, I, it's strange, isn't it? Why, why, how that works? I mean, do you yeah. think that's because some mediums are tuned into different people, or can only tune into to to various people? Many mediums are believed to, you know, all mediums have a different level of, uh, well, I don't say, I, I don't know how to say, it, consciousness or, or mediumship that they 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 work on to, or vibration they work on to tap in or tune in to, to their surroundings or loved ones over the other side. Um, you know, I, I really don't know. I'm very open-minded about it. I mean, what's interesting is the James Randi £1 million, pound, you know, test. No medium has ever, ever passed that test. Now, if, if a medium believes they can do what they can do, you know, and they're happy to be tested, no one's ever passed it. Well, do you, do you think, though, that their gift is allowed to, um, you know, uh, be, be tested like that in the, in the sense they can, you know, that, that their gift is allowed to uh, take that kind of money for, for validations? I mean, I, I don't know. Well, I think, I think if there was an agreement made that, that they would donate that money to charity, I don't see there's a problem with that, that they don't keep that money for themselves. I think if, if they agreed that that million pound would be donated to various charities, because it could help a lot of people rather than keep them for themselves. Yeah, I'm all for that. Okay. I'm absolutely all for that. Yeah. But keeping it for themselves, mm, I don't know. So uh, with yourself then, Ray, where, yeah. what, what's some of the most recent investigations that you've done? Um, some of the recent ones. So there's been a couple of private ones that, um, that we've done recently, which uh, at the moment I can't talk about, but they're very similar to the other case. Um, I, I pulled back a little bit because I, I've... I've I'm going back to basics with the investigations. I mean, from from the very early, early days, we used to use EMF meters, you know, all these kinds of equipment, which I now know cannot possibly detect ghosts or paranormal activity, you know. So we've gone back to basics. All we go back to now is a camera, a couple of cameras, some trigger objects and and dictaphones. Um, We sometimes use a medium, but more recently we haven't. Um, 
we, we've tried to go down the route now of not using a medium and, you know, we, we've been getting some good results. Well, why would you not use a medium for? Well, I don't think you have to use a medium. A medium, you know, and I hate to offend anyone, is just another tool in the, in the equipment bag. But then, so you're using your own senses. Exactly. Then. Are you quite psychic, would you say? Um, I, I wouldn't think so. I think everyone's got a level of sense, sensitivity. I wouldn't say I'm psychic at all. I think, you know, for instance, you walk into a house, you go and buy a house, you view this house and you get a feeling, oh, this feels really nice, or no, I don't, I don't feel this one. You know, where does that come from? Is it just that we... Is that a level of sensitivity? Are you picking up on that, that you might not be comfortable in the house, or did it not feel right? You're going on this new direction now. We're, we're, well, you've, you've stripped it bare basic, no mediums as such, yeah. and, and um, none of these uh, other uh, equipments that you, that you would need for yeah. that other people do use. And you've been getting just as good of results? Well, yeah, we've been getting some really good results. We've been getting things caught on camera, but obviously when you catch things on camera, shadows, what have you, you really have to, you know, analyse that footage. Some things we can't explain, some things we can explain. Uh, we're getting some good um, EVPs come through at the moment. But then again, you know, there, there's a lot of sceptics out there who don't believe in EVP, that believe, they believe it could be something else. But at, the, at this present time, we believe that, you know, it, it could be possibly spirit voices. Okay. I mean, you know, you talk about sensitivity. I mean, I was talking to somebody a, uh, quite a few months ago um, that, you know, obviously being a very proud gay man, um, do gay people have a level of sensitivity that would pick up more than a heterosexual person? Because it's believed that you have to have a level of sensitivity to be a sensitive, to be a psychic or a medium. You mean in the sense of that, that, that more feminine uh, sort of sensitivity? It, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good way of describing it, yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, I, I, you could then say, well, you, you're discriminating from, you know, can a heterosexual person not be sensitive? Well, yeah, they can be, but... Gay people, I believe, are naturally more sensitive natured. Interesting, and and um, you know that that that's a whole article in its own right, isn't it? It is. It's just something to think about. I mean, it's something I've thought about since this conversation. I mean, I, I don't know whether I'm barking up the wrong tree with it, whether it's it's completely wrong, but some kind of future case study would be very, very interesting. Oh, absolutely, absolutely would. I, I don't, I, I, you know, off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone that's, uh, that's ever done that before either. So no. um, something interesting that, you, that, that maybe you should, you should pursue. I mean, do you, do you think being gay, then, do you think you're more sensitive in a sense? Um, I, I, I'm very in touch. I know I'm very in touch with my thoughts and feelings. Um, and I, I am quite a sensitive person. Um, I, I, you know... <laughs> I, I've got quite a few gay and lesbian friends who are sensitive, but then some of the lesbian friends I know are very, what I would call, their their their, their nature is very heterosexual, very, I hate to say it, but very masculine. So I don't know what their level would be like. So it, it would be good to take a mixture of these gay people and heterosexual people out on the location. Well, there you go. You, you, I think you've got a PhD there. I think we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, after all these years of, of doing this, Ray, and, and uh, you know, it pr probably it doesn't feel that long ago when you first started, but it's been a process, hasn't it? Um, you know, what's your views on, on life in a sense? Like, you know, what, do, 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 can, have you, do you ask yourself those questions of why we're here? What's my purpose? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean... You know, I've sat down before. I mean, after losing my two best friends, you know, three months apart through through their suicide, I used to sit down and I have sat down and questioned, you know, what what is our purpose here? What do we do? Is this the hell that we're living and the heaven is somewhere where we go next? You know, that heaven and hell situation. You know, what what what's my purpose of being here? What what you know, what am I here to achieve? Yeah, because cause surely, you know, doing the, the investigations that you do, it must make you question everything. 
I do. I absolutely you've hit the nail on the head. I do question. I analyse. I analyse a lot. And I think sometimes it can be a good thing. Sometimes I can overanalyse, which is a bad thing. Um, but I do question everything. I don't know whether it's it's because I've investigated. I don't know whether it's because I've developed into that kind of mind frame. I don't know. But I question everything. I question, you know, I can watch a TV program to do with paranormal content on TV and I'm thinking, nah, that's not right, you know. Yeah. But I don't know. I wasn't there. But that's how I think. I question everything now. Well, I mean, do you see yourself... Um... Uh, staying in this field in 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 in, in the future, or the foreseeable future. I mean, as you've progressed spiritually and and knowledgeably as well, you know, uh, is this where you see yourself going? Or, well, I, I to be honest, the paranormal and the supernatural is always going to be a passion of mine. I love working with it. I love investigating. I like doing stuff for TV for it. And I'll be honest with you, I do because it's great to show people what we do. You know, isn't overly scary isn't is it frightening but it can be at times i mean my, my journey's taken me on a completely new direction at the moment i mean i've been presenting charity events you know ghost hunting charity events i was on stage at dudley castle when ian lawman was buried alive six feet under you know i was his main live presenter we're doing another big charity event next year together um, so I've I've moved into kind of presenting the paranormal now, which which is brilliant. It's just another forte that I I have found a talent for. And then obviously with that, I've got the writing, and now obviously I've gone down another avenue, and I'm writing, you know, like cookbooks, and you know I'm writing TV pilots which are completely non-paranormal. So uh, you know I'm I'm trying to be more diverse as as an entertainer. Okay, so yeah, you, you mentioned the cookbook there. So so yeah. uh, this is a this is a cookbook for your for for your soul or uh, yeah, yeah, it's cooking from the soul. It's cooking from the heart. That's my food philosophy, Wonderful. you know. I mean, I've now been asked uh talking to somebody else who appeared on Come Dine with me and we've decided to write a book together. So that'll be a third cookbook um if 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 I can get around to, you know, scheduling it in, that'd be a third one. Well, that's incredible. I mean, so, so from paranormal personality to, you know, food for the heart, but then it's, it's all in the same sort of direction, isn't it? It's, it's, it's all still spirituality, isn't it? I think, yeah, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, think, I, I think it's all in the same kind of avenue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, through, through your investigations, why do you think these these spirits are there, in your opinion? I mean, why have they not moved on? Uh, I mean, we're, we're told that we go, you know, that, that apparently when we pass on, um, you know, that there there is a heaven or there is uh, or somewhere where our consciousness goes to after this exi existence. Well, do you know what? You, you've just picked up on something there. You know, people get, I think people get confused over the word ghost and over the word spirits. I think the spirit, the spirit is the natural, the essence of us, the consciousness and where we go, which you've just talked about. And I think the ghost, when you go into a building, the ghost is almost like the replay of that person within the building, in the fabric of the building. That's, that's what I believe. Has your investigations and, and your work into the paranormal, has it made you at peace with, with your life in the sense that, you know, um, life is special and what matters is what we do now what, what we're here for oh absolutely absolutely um you know i always refer back to my two friends passing away that has had a massive impact on the way that i have an outlook the paranormal has had a major outlook change for me i mean i live every day you know laugh every day life is like a movie kevin be in it you know it, it's just live for today and you know never look back but always looking forward always yeah absolutely and i think that uh, a lot of past guests that i've had on have said the same thing as well um yeah. you know and, and being true to yourself as well oh absolutely i mean life is so short it really is so short i know it's a bit of a cliche to say that but it, it really is if there's things you want to do if there's things you want to achieve just go out and make them happen because they're not going to happen by themselves you okay. know no, that's 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 right. And um, if if only you know we all we all could uh, 
just take a day out of, out of our life just to do that, just to do some of the things that we love. But we, we get so stuck with, don't we, with the mundane tasks of life and everything that um, sometimes we, we put off these things that we should be doing and really, you know... Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I left school, I wanted to be an actor. Um, I tried for a while, and then obviously it didn't happen. Then I went into just normal mainstream, everyday employment. Um, and I lost my way for a bit. And then, you know, I got an opportunity quite a few years ago to appear on TV, and I've never looked back again. You know, and I thought, this is my time, this is my chance, I can do this. Yeah, and, and, you, and you're doing it as well. I'm trying. Uh, yeah, well, I'm trying. It's, 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 no, it's never easy for anyone, uh, yeah. but, but uh, you know, uh, it's not everyone that, that that's got the chance to do some of the stuff that you that, that you've been doing. I mean, I'm sure that you've met a lot of would-be investigators out there who've never took it as far as yourself. Uh, I have, I have, and and I, I get asked questions quite a lot. You know, what do you think I should do? And I always say, well, what do you think you should do? Well, that's a good. That's a good question. I mean, if someone's looking at, at uh, you know, starting their own uh, um, investigations or, or investigation group, yeah. I mean, what would you be? What would the advice be from yourself? Well, my advice would be, um, you know, make sure that the people that you're going to be working with closely are trusting. Make sure there's a level of trust between all of them. Um, also, that, that, that they need to have a level of passion, a real interest, because there's a lot of people out there, and I'll be honest with you, that I believe go into the paranormal to try and become famous, to try and create a team to get noticed, to be famous. But you've got to have that level of interest. Otherwise, you know, what's the point of doing it? Well, that's funny you say that. I know uh, a couple of investigators that have said to me, look, I'm only doing this to become famous so that I, I can actually become known uh, for my charity so that I can really push my charity. And I, you know, as much as there's a good intention behind it, perhaps this is not the, most, the, be the best way to do this. It's not because it's a very competitive field to be in. I mean, you know, it is a competitive thing. You need, if, if that's the way that people want to think to become famous, then there's plenty of other ways I can think of, you know, to... Uh, you know, to, to get out there, get in the press or what have you. Yes. But the paranormal, it, you need to have that level of passion, that interest, a genuine motivation to find out, you know, what what is out there, what's through that door. And, um, uh, I mean, what about sourcing locations? Is that, you know, something that, that must be quite difficult to do? Well, that's quite a fun part of the job, I think. You know, you sit down, you research, have a look at the area, have a look outside of your area, see what's been done, uh, as soon as you put a, a name of a location, it will throw up, you know, information that other people have been there or haven't been there. I try personally to get locations that haven't been investigated before because then, you know, we we haven't got like the upper hand, but we've got the, 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 the knowledge that, you know, we're not going to be influenced by anything else. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And is there any sort of no-nos to uh, when... Um um, setting, up, setting up your own team and starting to do your own investigations? Oh, I think there's always some no-nos. I mean, you know, never, ever, if you're going to have a medium, never, ever let the medium privy to any information. Um, if you're going to have a medium, meet that medium at a certain meeting point near that location and then take that medium to the location. Because otherwise, you, you could be accused of influencing that medium. That medium could have, you know, like what we've got now, iPads, you know, mobile phones, source the information if they know exactly where they're going. So we, we, we don't know between them leaving the house and arriving what, you know, it's that level of trust. Yeah, and you need that level of trust, don't you, when you're doing something like this as well? Oh, I think so, but you've got to have that trust because you've got to support each other, you know. You, we just don't know what's going to happen when we're out and about, you know. No, ab absolutely. And, and, and um, when you've gone international as well yeah. uh, and done your, your international investigations, yeah. um, I remember there, there was a, I think there was a chapter in your book about Marilyn Mon Monroe. Um, you investigated Marilyn Monroe, didn't you? Uh, well, he, Marilyn is, has always been, you know, this is going to sound really bizarre, part of my life. I mean, ever since I can remember... You know, I've had the interest in Marilyn as an actress, as a person, and also, you know, the way she passed away, the way she died. Was it murder? Was it suicide? You know, that that has generated, I think, what she's all about, her name. Um, you know, I've, I've stayed at the Roosevelt Hotel, um, had a room opposite the, the cabin where Marilyn 
um, lived for, for a while and had some bizarre experiences there. Marilyn's Mirror, uh, which was in a hotel room, which is now in the lobby. Um, you stand in front of that and you do get a sense of remorse, sadness. Um, you, it's bizarre. Unless you're there to experience, stand in front of that mirror, you, you would know what I was talking about. Right. So you've, you, so you've, you've been there in front of the mirror and you've, you've had these feelings. Yeah. Yeah. I was there last year, last July. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, was there not some, some other occasions that you had as well where, uh, in, with with investigating uh, Marilyn, where you you went to her uh, coffin or her uh, resting place, and um, there was some experience there as well. Um, yes, I w- it was last year. I was there with a, a medium called Bobby Marqueso. Um Bobby is is a really really good friend of mine, and um, one of the things I wanted to do was um, visit Marilyn's grave because every time in, I'm in LA, I take time out to take some flowers over because it's my way of respect, you know. And uh, I was there with Bobby. Um, this was at Westwood Memorial Cemetery. And uh, I was talking to Bobby. Now, Bobby stars in a TV show called Conversations with the Serial Killer. And he's a medium. And he's only one of the three that I trust, you know, that has given me information. Sure. That I absolutely believe. So I trust him 110%. And um, we, were, we were outside her her crypt. It's like a war coffin. You know, she's buried into like a wall. It's a crypt. Um, and he put his hand on, on, on the, the stone, um, and, and he, he said he was genuinely talking to Marilyn, um, you know, which, which I found quite interesting. I was mm. there just to lay some flowers, yet he was talking to Marilyn. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and was there anything in particular that she said, or was it just um, personal? Well, I, I, I believe some of the stuff I, I wasn't privy to, but I, I believe Bobby said, um, that that he, she you know I, I it's a long time ago um i believe that he said she she was like sad yeah i'm sure that's one of the things that he said she was sad um, um but she wasn't there all the time she comes and goes we always you know we we go we go to to respect uh, our loved ones sometimes that have passed by going to their gravestone but yeah that's not that can't be where they are uh, spiritually i mean you know that that's that's just uh I mean, what do you think? I mean, no, of course they're not there, are they? You know, no. that's just the way that I look at it. You're just a vehicle. That that that's what's left. The vehicle, your essence, your your soul, your, your consciousness. That that's gone. That's that's moved away. You know, that's gone out of the body. Um, you know, people might say, well, he's wrong with his information. You know, why is he? You know, I've got different opinions of different things. I've got my own beliefs. Of course. Um, so I think, you know, the body that we're in, that's, that's our vehicle. So that's thats what's left. Your bones, your dust, that, that's it. We're not there. No. We've gone. We've moved on. It's like you get asked, well, I, well, I've been asked many times, where do you think we go? And I always say, I would like to think that I go to somewhere where I was happy or where I believe I will go. I, I, you know, I don't think we go to this heaven where, you know, there's all these angels and beautiful people walking around over hills, you know, very like Julie Andrews, like spinning around singing and, you know, very beautiful place. I believe that we go to where, if we think about somewhere, that's where we go. So basically, we make up the, the reality of the experience ourselves. Yeah. Uh, basically, and, and I suppose another way of saying that is, is, is what, when we pass we still carry on creating. Well, yeah, I, I think we do. I mean, what, what's, you know, if, if we just get to somewhere, then, then what happens? Are, are we just stuck in that, that particular loop? Are, are, you know, I, I think we, I would like to believe, put it that way, we, we carry on evolving, we carry on developing, we carry on creating, as you say. Well, after doing your, you know, your, your, Spending your time in the paranormal for, some, yeah. for a number of years. Yeah. I mean, I mean, has your fear of death diminished? Uh, I do not have any fear whatsoever. Before, um, years and years ago, uh, especially after the girls died, I was so, so frightened of passing away. I was so frightened of seeing, you know, seeing them. You know, I, I, I was... I had counselling for a while. Little good did that have, you know, because it wasn't a professional counsellor. 
it was just someone referred you know by the doctor um i wasn't sleeping i was worried that i would go you know but now 12 years on from that experience i've got no fears whatsoever less uh, less questions or more questions I think I'm always going to question everything because that's the type of guy that I am. You know, I will always question everything. But I, I'm certainly not, I have no fear about death anymore. Okay. And and just, just uh, to sort of uh, finishing off the international investigations that you've sure. done, now we've talked about the Mexican uh, uh, investigation and the uh, the Maryland's um, uh, part, parts of that as well. But uh, what, what other international investigations have you done, Ray? Um, well, we... we been to France. We did some stuff in France. Um, I've done a private house in France. We've done stuff in um, uh, Texas. Um, where else have I done? We've been over to Guernsey, um, Jersey, uh, Spain. So I'm getting around a bit. I'm getting around. So, in these in, you know uh, investigations internationally, um, yep. are, are there, is it more fun to go international to do these kind of investigations? I think it is because we're, we're you know here in the UK we we we're, we're in a comfort zone really. Um, when you're out of your comfort zone, when you're in a different country, you may be working with different people that you haven't built up a rapport to or you know had that working experience with. I, I think it's exciting. I mean if. I would love to, you know, win the Euro Millions and just continually investigate around the world all year round. I mean, wow, how amazing would that be? What would be one achievement like that you'd like to do uh, in your work in the next couple of years? Um, I think I would just like to get one shred of evidence that cannot be faulted, that 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 would give people a comfort or or give people something to talk about to say yeah this is you know this is this could be the evidence that we we've wanted yeah. or we're searching for because you know i would like that evidence to be tried to be tested to be done this that and the other you know analyzed that's what i would like but will it happen i don't know who well, knows why don't you think the evidence of the continuation of the consciousness uh, is so easy to sort of um, uh, pinpoint down? I mean, why do you think no one's ever come up with 100% um, um, uh, you know, uh, factual evidence to say, look, you know, here's a picture, here's a piece of video, watch it, and, and you know, you'll see that, the, the, that obviously you know, the paranormal, the, the, the ghosts, or whatever you want, spirit people, they do exist. I think a any, any bit of evidence whether it's been caught by the best, uh, the unknown, um, whoever, it's always going to be poo-pooed. It will always be, it will never be classed as proven, ever. Nothing will be. But, uh, you know, ev everyone, or the sceptics, or the non-believers, will always say that, you know, it's not real. But, but that comes with the territory. Yeah, of course it you know, does. I mean, there, there, there will, it will happen. I firmly believe it will happen, whether it's myself, whether it's whoever. There will be one bit of evidence come through that nobody will be able to dispute. Um, just tell me about your investigations at the, um, let me get this right, it was the disused army barracks. Oh, the disused army barracks, yeah. that, that was. Uh, we had the opportunity to... Um, investigate on a military camp which was really really you know a great privilege because um, obviously it's secure and everything like that and there was a building um, which was the old uh, quarters army quarters which was reportedly haunted um, you know through it's been there for absolute donkey's years I'm, I'm talking um, this is the the place where the guys used to live they used to you know relax and briefing rooms and what have you and it was being pulled down to make room for a modern building, and we had a chance to um, spend some time there, which was brilliant. I mean, there were there, I was I was walking around with a, a friend called Julia and Sam from my team, and uh, you know, like doors were, were were banging right behind us. Um, could it have been the wind because it was an empty building? Some of the windows were missing. It could have been. Was there was there any other sort of goings on there? 
there were strange noises. I mean, again, there there were orbs caught. Um, I say it very loosely, orbs caught on on um, uh, on the cameras and what have you. But again, that could can be completely, you know, dust. Uh, we we were hearing what we believe was kind of murmuring. There were there were uh, voices, um, but then again because it was empty and it was completely stripped back, could that have been other people in the building that we were hearing? I mean, we we just don't know. No, no, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's There's still so much more to be investigated, isn't there? That's right. I, I think there is. I think, I think we're never, ever going to stop learning from this, ever. And is there a final wording that you'd like to give the audience? Final word? Yeah, just, just do not give up believing, you know... Uh, Despite what anybody else will tell you, they might laugh at you, they might criticise in your thoughts and feelings, but that, you know, never give up on your own thought train, ever. You know, if you believe we go on to somewhere else, that's that's what we believe. You know, if you believe we don't, then we don't. But never, never give up, never give up. Well, Ray Jordan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much. To find out more information on Ray Jordan, just go to my website, which is themoreshow.co.uk, and look up Ray Jordan under Past Guests. And don't forget you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter to get the latest updates on the shows, and that we also have a TV show which goes out on Sky 201 and FreeSat 403 every Friday from 6pm. So until next time, thanks for listening. If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows.